The cause, or LCP, means leadership, creative management and psychology. We have a cohort of 150 European business students who produce, in 10 weeks' time, 10 short films. Why do we do this? It can be hamburgers or washing powder, but we have chosen films, not just for the creation, also for the distribution and for the selling. So, when we speak about all the films you might see quite uh, shortly, these are not film students. So, they are not in the film business, but they're using their creative skills in the way how we merge creativity and business to produce something which can then be shown to the public. Hence, this means also we have to look at quality issues as well. So we have people from outside, like you guys, thank you, like people like Elliot Grove, for example, I don't know if you came across with him, and Chris, who are helping us within the process. The main issue is here that we see ourselves as a business, completely self-financed. Hence, it is not just that we have to create the product, but to sell the product and to get the finances and to get the sponsors and speak about clustering where we can get material for free, etc., etc. It runs like a little production company. And for us, it is actually the first time that we have, well, brilliant partners, yeah, with Raj and Pablo, who are helping us also because these are European students, these are international students, to bring an intercultural aspect into the program. So they said to us, under the notion of Exodus, which is our theme, we have the opportunity to also compete with two films in the Bollywood market if the films could be transferable to an Indian clientele. So we are novice in this area. Completely. So afterwards we might ask a lot of questions, yeah? but we try and with our lack of knowledge, yeah, we try to adapt what you guys might looking for. And hence, I mean, this comes then afterwards that we might ask questions with reference, okay, what do you expect us to do? Also for the future, and I just would like to introduce you to my students. So this is Jürgen and he produced the film Moments, and this is Clemens who produced the film Way Out. the shots as well. Um, here I think um, it's basically two moves that have very European sensibility I think. Things that I, that I uh, would pick up on that are Bollywood are 
um, melodrama and women's stories. Um, yes, they could translate them, but it's kind of like what are the elements of Bollywood these days that you're looking for? And, and which is about height and height and devotion. In the West, we seem to work from a much more of an intellectual through line. So you work from uh, in in approaching a script, you work from thought to thought to thought. What's my thought here? What motivates me to do this? What motivates me to do that? From what I, the Bollywood actors that I work with seem to not worry about what you're thinking. It's much more about what you're feeling, and and that's why that's why um, Bollywood films are much more emotional. Actors in in India and Bombay don't do an intellectual through line. They, what's my emotion? Am I happy? Am I sad? And they play the emotion. So there's no such thing as subtext in any of that. So the consider films that you see today. How do you feel? Do you translate it or not? I think the second one, the second one has more of a, the, 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 the premise of it is there simply because you did it in the genre of a silent film. So it could have been watching, you know, Charlie Chaplin or any of those old black and white melodramas where you've got a good piece of piano playing underneath and you had the letter being read, which would have been a caption, which you did with the letter. And why, I mean, it might be a tenuous link, but certainly Bollywood, you know, the key thing to it is the music. So that you can have, people like Tarantino and Scorsese have, not, I don't think they're necessarily influenced by the Bollywood, but they've kind of done a parallel thing that music heightens an emotion because it's the music is the most emotive art form you get, more than painting, more than film, more than theatre. Music will touch you inside. You don't even have to have your eyes open. The music will make you cry without you knowing it. You know, um, and certainly in Bollywood, music plays such a major part. In Bollywood, the women have too many men. He's in love with her, she's in love with her, he's in love with her. And in these films, the women didn't have any men. She's stuck in the picture because he's in love with someone else. And the first one's like, she's too pretty, why does no one like him? He slams the door on her. And that would never happen. You know, like you know. So in a way, you know, they could take your short films and go to Bombay and shoot them tomorrow and just filter it through that sensibility. And we could show it again in two weeks' time and you'd go, they become Bollywood movies. Because there's this amazing capacity to, to just make the style of movies out of whatever um, is there, whatever material. And the rest of the movies are far more free in the way that you can yeah, really move men and women you know, around in any kind of circumstances you would like to have them. Whereas in, with reference to your market, they are just giving more to a particular picture of frame. I think the majority want to attempt to work with what works. Right. What the majority want to see. They don't right. want to see a man falling over the man. Or a, you know, they want to see the female and the, the hero and the heroine. I think they want to see that. They have tried it, I think it didn't work. I do remember one film with Robert his name died. And they did try where he and they never worked. Like they often fall into, into stereotypes. Yes, you know, yeah. the, the, the marriage suitor, the, um, the twin brothers, the, um, you know, the, the, the angry father. No, no, but that's, different. That's, a, that's a different subject. That's to do with classics. That's to do with what makes a classic. What makes Shakespeare a classic. What makes Jane Austen classic is that it translates all cultures. It's McDonald's, a very expensive burger, really. And it's the same with Bollywood. You find a you find a story. It works. We'll do twenty of them after that. You know uh, that's why films like Little Bagel here and Kuch Kuch Hota here very similar love triangle thing. Very similar songs. Very similar style of filmmaking. But it worked first time. So fuck it. Let's do it again. You know we'll make more money. So it's really it's it's catering to the audience. Um, Hollywood is as big a culprit. And how are documentaries? Are they welcome? For example, we have a topic immigration here in London. Yeah? Mm. Would this be a topic which could be in an in, in, um, in the market? <coughs> market? A lot of new young directors yes. coming up, and they've been influenced much more by Western films now. Right. So they're trying to do deal with subject matters which are yeah. you know slightly offbeat and controversial and filmmaking yeah. which is slightly offbeat, moving away from the formula. Um, it's still in its infancy stage, it's still growing and it's, a, it's an exciting time for young Indian directors in India, Bombay, and yeah. Delhi and places like that because they're trying they're, and um, it's becoming quite popular mm -hmm. and there's some good ones, there's, 
a lot of bad ones, but you know, it, as long as it's there and bubbling away, that's good. I'm, I'm not quite clear on what really you're asking because if it's, you know, documentaries, films, documentary films weren't really a hit in the cinema until something like When We Were Kings came out, mm -hmm. you know, about Muhammad Ali, and when that came out, suddenly there were lots more, you know, there was Welcome to Columbine and Touching the Void, all these films mm. that you went to the cinema to yeah. see instead of watching on television, which is great. That, I don't think India's caught on to that yet. Mm. But yeah. understanding the culture would probably help. For well, showing these 10 short films, this was last Friday, and the first May Fair, the first technical rehearsal, where we had uh, Raj and, and Pablo, and on the other hand, we had Grey Dance, Elliot, Grove, and Chris, and it was really interesting to see that they have chosen completely different films mm -hmm. because the rain dance thing is going on tonight. So the other lot is there to show their two films, which is a completely different area, which you just said you would have never chosen. Uh, what would what would reach an Indian market? Is this, this part of the idea of... Well, I mean, the, it came actually up to us in the middle of the term. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this kind of stuff, to have the opportunity to run a competition mm -hmm and give the students to a different entrance. I think as far as the Indian market goes, it's changing at the moment quite a lot. And I mean, I'm going through this at the moment with my, my movie coming out in India in the next couple of months, and then being shown on Star TV from, from July. And Star TV has now almost become more, more powerful than, than the Indian cinema circuit. Distributors won't make any money back on the Indian um, cinema circuit. They'll make it back on selling it to Star TV. So the, the question is now, what kind of packages does Star TV want to buy as a, as a pan-Asian TV um, uh, distributor, if you like? And um, to, to buy are things which have elements of Asiana in them, whether that's um, NRIs in, in, in England or in Vancouver or whatever. Maybe they'll show those, but whether they show something which is much more European, I don't know. So maybe the, the, what I'm saying is the key to sales to India is maybe in a way connecting with the outer India experience around the world. Maybe there's, there's that, because that is what in my anticipation of most sales, which is why I think you know, Pride and Prejudice will um, sell really well over Asia, because it, it knows that it's mixing those two East and Western things. As a business person, you study the, the, the market that you're entering, and you sell the goods according to what's what's there. If it's a marketplace, then yeah. understand what's the, what, what will people buy. How can you compress that into five minutes? Why would you want to? Because that's what we have film. Oh, right. Well, yeah. short films are, are, should be their own little thing as well. I mean, yeah. short films are short films, features are features. Mm -hmm. And um, they should stand up on their, in their own right. When you break into song and dance, you advance the story. So the song will t give you information about the story. Yeah, Whereas right. with Bollywood films, you'll just have a song to, to, to exp express the emotion that you're feeling. So when, nowadays, when you, nowadays, it used to be old style Bollywood in the 40s and early 50s was that old, you know, the glass and the pop. It yeah. lost that, it yeah. lost that. So yeah, nowadays, it's, it's just it's a, a, it's a, a pop, pop, pop promo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but it also, it, it pops up to heighten that emotion. Yeah, once they're falling yeah. in love, we need a song. Yeah. Once, once, once they've fallen apart, you need a song. Whereas any musical in the West now, we're going to fall. You know, it gets to that stage where we're falling in love, and we're going to sing to you about falling in love to advance the story, and that's that's a big difference. And I don't, I don't know which one I like more, really. I'm, don't sure, I'm not sure if I like either, but th it's just beginning to make those comparisons and study the, the differences. It's difficult to make. Something with an Indian flavour in five minutes. With short films, the best thing about short films is, is is because they're short. It's taking advantage of the length of time. If you've got <coughs> three hours to, to tell a story, then you tell it three hours. If you've got five minutes to tell a story, I think it's a harder task, and it's, it, it's something I admire. That I admire being able to tell a good story. In, in that five minutes, because you basically, if you whittle down these three hour films, there's only actually five minutes of story anyway. You know, uh, the skill comes in that. A lot of directors, all the directors. I remember the first short film I saw of Martin Scorsese's 
was uh, the big the big shade. Yeah. The shade, yeah. And very simple film, and it was a protest against the Vietnam War, wasn't it? Yeah, there were many conversations. In and all it was was a guy shaving in the bathroom, and then he finishes shaving and he shaves again, and he finishes shaving and he shaves again, and he keeps shaving until he's basically he's peeled the skin off his face. And all you see is cutaway shots of it's in black and white as well, isn't it? Uh, no, no, it's no, not a very drained colour. Yeah, and it's, you see this white porcelain with drips of blood. And, and it's only about three or four minutes long, but a very powerful film that says so much. I mean, shockingly good for about three minutes you're watching this. And that was, you know, that's a great way to tell a story, which also allows you to think and w w work out what's going on. What do you feel about what's being told? But also, if you were Bollywoodizing, the, say, the girl in the bath, I mean, if you, it's an exercise that you could run through your head. You know, have Preeti Zinta in the bath, right, in a towel, uh, when she gets out of the bath. Uh -huh. and, 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 you know, the guy, <laughs> the guy, the guy around the corner, um, you know, uh, Amitabh Bachchan or somebody, and then get somebody else to score it, and you've got a little bit of a dreamy song and dance in the middle there. And you've got a Bollywood short, you know, because the star system in, in Bollywood, as soon as you put those stars in there, it will be accepted as Bollywood because you're then dealing with Bollywood stars. It doesn't matter what, what the subject matter is. You've got one, you've got one dance in there, one song, and you've got the stars. It's Bollywood. Considering how backward the, the Indian culture is these days, uh, you know, we can't even say sexy, we can't say crap on the air because we'll just get told off big time or even taken off the air. Do you think that's the Bollywood's going the right way? I think it's totally going the right way. Some right but considering, to considering how back with the uh, Asian Asians. culture is. It, yeah, in total. But you're talking about Asian without, culture without in South India. India. No, no, I'm talking Asian. about Asian culture in India. Because let's face it, Narendra, if you, uh, when you were 14, would your parents let you go out with the guy? Okay. No, they wouldn't have found you yeah. secretly. But yeah, but if you, were, if you weren't Asian, that would be okay. I'm talking about Maybe that's, not, maybe, that's but I know okay. what you're saying. I know what you're saying in terms of. You're talking about your radio station in that region, but that's not as Asian culture as a whole. I'm percent. talking about the general Bollywood films. Well, they're taking but you're saying they're forward. getting better, they're getting touchy, they're getting more feely, they're getting well, more naked. Yeah, they're getting yeah, more they're sexy. Get better, but do you think that's the right way yeah. to go forward, to force, force the Asian community out? I think so, I think it's totally why not. Yes. Yeah, in Bombay, where things are moving on so fast that they're leaving behind the old trends and you know it's okay to show a bit of skin because no one's going to go oh my god there's a naked woman in the shower. Some of the discussions I've had with Indians in India they say god the Indians in Britain they're so conservative you know and that raises a whole other issue of being immigrants in a country where parents are saying don't lose your traditions don't lose your language don't lose your culture and in fact becomes a little bit more oppressive whereas India now is, has evolved and, but uh, I mean, of course, it's and it will continue to evolve. Ram Teri Ganga Million. I remember that was the first wet sari scene I ever saw. You know, and that was twenty years, fifteen years ago. I've got the clip. Before that, it was it was Sundaram Shivam Sundaram with Zinat the Man in a sari with no bra on. My God, you know, you just people were shocked. And I remember when this film Kasme Bade came out. So my brother wasn't allowed to go and see it because it was a bit racy. You know. Uh, but if you look at the films now, and I think of my parents sitting there watching filming films, thinking, God, what must they be thinking? Because it is all flesh now. But then it's going to go in that direction whether anybody likes it or not now, because but it's, it's a, a huge money making. It's an interesting parallel to that, because um, my parents went, used to go to watch European movies in the 60s simply because people got their clothes up. They couldn't understand the language of you know, Italian, French, or whatever. We could go there, you could noodle on the back row, and also they were, like you say, racy. So, in a way, it was just you know, British society in the 60s catching up with you know, German or, or Swedish uh, or French society in, you know, as far as sex goes. And, and this is obviously beginning to happen in India as well. Okay, guys, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I hope everyone's going to stay and enjoy the party. Um, if any of you guys want to speak to Narinda, Jeremy, or Nathan, I'm sure they're going to be around. Can, 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 I, can I just say before we go, these guys are not film students, right? But I these two shorts are actually better than a lot of stuff I see oh, from yeah. film students. There you go, guys. So, I mean, you know, well done. Brilliant, guys.